We're excited to announce that Boundary Enterprise and Session Recording are now generally available. Boundary Enterprise is our new addition of Boundary and is self-managed in your environment, making it the perfect choice for organizations that are not able to use SaaS products for compliance or regulatory reasons. Additionally, with Session Recording, this new feature enables users to track actions when accessing privileged systems. I'm here in the studio with Pete, who works here at HashiCorp as the head of product management overseeing the Boundary team. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Jordan. I'm excited to talk about Boundary Enterprise, session recording, and represent all the hard work that the team has done. So for those in the audience that aren't familiar with Boundary, Pete, I think it'd be great if you could just explain at a high level what Boundary enables you to do. Totally. So Boundary creates simple, least privileged access to cloud infrastructures. Users authenticate to Boundary with their identity provider of choice and then can connect to various targets. Those might be VMs, databases, containers, wherever they're running. Their access is secured with multiple layers of security controls. This includes just-in-time network access to your targets and single-use credentials via HashiCorp Vault. User permissions are reevaluated every time you log in to reflect the specific context you bring with you. So let's say that you're an actual user and your organization has provisioned boundary for you. Would you be able to walk us through what that workflow would look like? Definitely. So let's say I'm a user connecting to a target. Maybe I'm SSHing to a Linux VM in Azure. I log in with my identity provider. That could be any OIDC or LDAP provider, such as Microsoft and Entra ID, the IDP formerly known as Azure Active Directory, or maybe Okta. Based on my identity and permission claims, I'm given access to a boundary role that granularly controls what services I can connect to. It's a more secure model than a VPN, where with a VPN, once I'm on a network, I have access to everything on that network. Now, once I'm authenticated, I can select a host or service to connect to. Finally, Boundary creates a time-limited secure connection to my remote endpoint with a dynamic secret provision by vault. So previously, Boundary has been available in open source, and HCP Boundary has been available as a cloud-managed service on the HashiCorp cloud platform. Boundary Enterprise is a new addition that customers can deploy in their own environments with commercial support. So what's different about Boundary Enterprise versus the open source and cloud offerings that were already available for Boundary? Yeah, so Boundary's workflow and API is the same whether you're using Enterprise, HCP, or open source. Boundary Enterprise, as well as HCP Boundary, both do have some commercial features that are geared towards enterprise governance, such as things like session recording, multi-hop sessions, and credential injection. Choosing the right addition of Boundary for you is really just a question of what meets your use case, because all offerings have a consistent user experience and workflow. HCP Boundary is a great option for those that want the simplicity of a cloud service, but don't want to sacrifice security. With HCP Boundary, you can get up and running with an easy-to-use, one-click deployment. Boundary Enterprise, on the other hand, is great for organizations operating in highly regulated environments where customers can't use cloud services or need to host all of their data on-premises. So one enterprise-only feature you mentioned was session recording. So we're excited to announce the general availability of session recording in Boundary Enterprise and also on HCP Boundary Plus tiers. So Pete, would you be able to give us a little bit of an overview on session recordings and also what data can be tracked? Definitely. So session recordings enable organizations to track actions a user takes when accessing privileged systems. It's typically a key requirement for regulated industries and most privileged access management use cases. I'm showing on the screen an example of a potential exploit where sensitive data is copied from a production system. Now with session recordings, forensic investigators can see a detailed playback of what happened. There are also compliance standards that oftentimes require organizations to keep a record of all actions taken against a production system. As an example, PCI compliance requires seven years of storage, stored recordings, which is required for any service processing credit card transactions. Boundary's initial launch of session recording supports SSH recording and playback um, of recordings via storage on AWS S3. We'll continue to expand to other protocols and other storage providers over time. So this all makes a lot of sense. And I think what we want to talk about now is how Boundary handles recordings securely. So Boundary itself operates as a proxy and sessions are recorded via protocol decoding on Boundary worker nodes. 
Recording via proxy means that you don't need to install an agent on target systems. Unlike with agent-based recordings, users can't turn off recordings on targets even if they have admin or root level permissions on the host. In terms of storage, workers send recordings to S3 storage, which resides in your environment. HashiCorp as a vendor never has access to those recordings. However, it's one thing to talk about this in theory, but it would be great, Pete, if you could show us a demo of this working in action. Yeah, I'm happy to, Jordan. Here I have a pre-configured boundary environment with workers already set up, so those can proxy connections to my private endpoints. I also have a recording storage bucket configured using AWS S3 as its backend. I'll go into one of my boundary scopes where I already have an endpoint configured as a target. For credential management, we're using our integration with HCP Vault to create and inject SSH certificates on behalf of users that connect to the machine. That way they have a passwordless access model. For auditing purposes, I'll enable session recording. Now, once enabled, any sessions established to this target from any user will be recorded. I'll also specify a bucket for storing recordings to be stored. Now, let's look at an end user, John, connecting to the system. John authenticated to boundary with Auth0. John can then connect to a target using the CLI via a boundary connect SSH command. Now, once John is connected to the remote system, let's say he starts running some malicious commands that copy sensitive information off of the host. In this case, he's copying local passwords to a file and exporting it off the machine, something that I would be worried about if I was a security administrator in this organization. Now, once the session is actually completed, I can go back to the admin UI and see that there's some interesting metadata about the session when it was created, who created the session, and the bytes that went up and down over the tunnel as part of the session. I can also go in and see the specific commands that were run within the session. Recordings are stored within the what we call the BSR format, or the Boundary Session Recording format, which supports playback via the admin UI and through open source playback tools like ASCII Cinema. As a security administrator going through a forensic investigation after a breach, session recording gives me visibility into the actions that were performed. Great. Well, thanks so much for that demo. So for anyone in the audience that wants to learn more about Boundary Enterprise and session recording, there's actually a link on your screen where you can go to learn more and get started. Thanks so much for being here, Pete. Thanks for having me, Jordan.